All right, today we are going to be finding equations of lines if we're given two points. Now, we haven't done this. What we've done in this class so far is I've given you the equation of lines and I've asked you to find, to graph them, right? So I give you the equation. We had two methods to do it. We have the intercept method and then we have the slope intercept method, all right? So that's what we can do up to now, you know, theoretically. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna shift it. I'm gonna give you two points on a line and I'm gonna ask you to, kind of, to come up with the equation of it. And then we're gonna talk about parallel and perpendic perpendicular lines. And then after we're done with that, these two, we're pretty much gonna be done with lines for now. And then we're gonna move on to functions, which is a more general topic, all right? So let's start off. First of all, first thing I wanna say on this first topic is that remember, the equation of a line okay, can be written really in two different forms. Okay, there's two different forms we like for when it comes to equation of line. The first form is this. It's some number a in front of x plus some number b in front of y equals some number c. And this is called standard form. And I'll give you an example of that underneath it. Something like 3x minus 4y equals 12. So you've got the variables x and y on the left side, and you've got some number on the right side. You've got numbers in front of the variables. So like the a here would be 3, the b here would be negative 4, right? This is, this is our standard form. And uh, if I asked you to graph that right now, I would expect that you could do that, right? You could do one of the two methods. The second form is called the, uh, well, let me write it first, y equals mx plus b. This is called the slope-intercept form. And we actually already, hi, we actually already looked at that last time, right? This is, the set, this is the form that we like to work with if we're gonna use the second method to sketch a line. So this is called slope-intercept form. And an example of this would be something like this. Y equals negative one-half X minus four, right? Those are your, stu your, your two standard equations of a line. Now, again, our goal here is now, if I give you two points on a line, can you give me an equation of the line? And the equation you give me can be either one of these. Doesn't matter which one you give me. Now, most of the time, we're gonna go for this one, all right? We're gonna go and try and turn it into this. So the question is, how do we do it, right? So before we do it, we just wanna make sure that we understand a few definitions in terms of some language when it comes to a line. So when we go and we look at the graph of a line, of course we said last time you need two points to define a line. So give me a point, give me another point. There's a line that goes through these, like that, right? If you take any two points, any two points, doesn't matter what, which ones they are, and you calculate, so from this point to this point, if you calculate the, the the distance you move up, okay, we call that the rise, and then the distance we go from left to right is called the run. I'm sure you've heard this. Um, yes? Yeah, most of y'all have. It's just maybe been a while. Okay, so what we like to do is we like to draw a little triangle here like this, a little right triangle, and this right here we call the rise, and this we call the run. Now, do you, all, do you all agree that if I do a different point, right? Let's say we leave this point here, but we take a different point up here, that I'll have a different triangle, right? I'll have a different rise, and I'll have a different run. You squinted your eyes, yeah? You're all right? Right, if I take a different point, I'm gonna have a different rise, different run, different triangle, yes? But no matter what, any two points, if I take the ratio of this side divided by this side, it will always be the same no matter where I am, whatever two points I pick. So if I take this distance and divide it by this distance, 
it will be the same as this divided by this. It will give you the same number, all right? And since it's the same, no matter what two points I pick, it's constant for the whole, for the, the entire line. We have a name for it, we call it the slope of the line. So we define the slope of the line to be the rise over run. You all know this because we used it already, right, to graph. But what's important now is how do we get the rise in the run from these two points, right? So if I give you two points, can you, can you extract the slope from those two points? And there is a way to do it, all right? And there's a formula for it, and you have to know what it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this point here, and I'm going to label it. It has some x-coordinate and some y-coordinate. Do you all agree? And then this one, this point has an x and a y also. So if I label it like this, that labeling isn't good because they look like they're the same thing, right? So what we do instead is we say x subscript 1, y subscript 1, x sub 2, x sub 2, and that way you can distinguish them from one another. This is the x coordinate of the first point, y coordinate of the first point. x coordinate of the second point, y coordinate of the second point. And so does anyone know what the slope is, what the definition is in terms of these things? No? Tell me what this distance would be from here to here. So how tall is this point? How high up is it? How high is it? Well, to get to that point, you have to go over and up, right? Over and up. How, how far up do I go? Y'all are looking at me like I'm speaking a different language right now. What does this represent? What is this right here? This always tells you how far you go left and right, yes? And this represents how far you go up and down, right? So would you agree that the height of this point is y2? That's how tall it is. It's y2. And how, how high is this point? y1, right? So if I want to know the difference between the two, right, this distance, it would be that y2 take away this y1. And that's what rise will always be. It's the difference of the y coordinates. Make sense? Yes? OK, thank you. All right, now what about the run from here to here? That's not the difference of the, the y's anymore, right? That's the difference of the x's, right? So that's going to be x2 minus x1. And so if I want to take, if my slope is the rise divided by my run, then this will always be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is the formula. I'm going to put m here because we usually use the letter m to represent the slope. So, given two points, right, given two points on a line, if I give you two points, you should always be able to get me the slope of that line by calculating this little fraction right here, right, just plugging the numbers in and figuring out what that is. That'll give us the slope of the line, yes? The goal is to find the equation of the line, not the slope. I want more than the slope, I want the entire equation. So we need one more thing in order to get the equation, all right? So the next thing we need to get the equation of the line is a for another formula, a second formula, that is called the point-slope formula. So on your next exam, I'm going to allow you to have a... Uh, like a reference sheet that you can create, all right? A little cheat sheet. And you, you can't work out any problems on that sheet, but you can put formulas and things like that. And this would be something you definitely want to have on there. And this would be something you want to have on there. So the points of formula works like this. It says, if you're given any point, any point, I'll call it x1, y1, okay, on a line, and its slope, m, 
right? Then the equation of the line is, okay, so here it is. Here's the equation of the line. Y minus Y1 equals M parentheses X minus X1. And that is your point slope formula. Now while you're copying that down, I'm going to put it on the side here off camera because we're about to use it, use those. All right, got it? So the way this is going to work is this. If I give you two points, right, the first thing you're going to do is calculate the slope. And that'll give you m, right? And then you're going to use this formula. You, you will then know what m is, right? You'll replace that m with whatever number you got over there. And then you will replace x1 and y1 with the coordinates of any point that you have on the line. And we're going to have two points, right? So we get to choose which one. You can pick either one, right? So let's do it. All right, so here we go. Um, find the equation of the line through negative 3, 5, and let's go negative 7, negative 4. So I've given you two points, right? There's some line through those two points. I'm asking you for the equation of it. Now, you don't need to draw this line, but I'm going to real quick, just to give you an idea of what we're trying to do. Negative 3, 5 means go to the left 3 and up 5, right? And put a point here. And then this is negative 7, negative 4. There's negative 7, and then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere around there. And then I draw a straight line through those. That's not very straight, but you get the idea. Okay. We are trying to find the equation of that line. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the slope is. And that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. By the way, you cannot switch these, okay? Like, you can't do y1 minus y2 and then x2 minus x1. It's got to be... You do the twos first, subtract the ones, or you can do the ones first, subtract the twos. You just can't, you can't flip that and not flip this one. So I would just say, forget it. Just remember this formula, all right? Now, the, the thing we need to do over here that we have not done is we have two points, is we get to label these, all right? I'm, I'm going to call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. And now we just plug in, right? So we'll go around the room. We'll start off. So can you tell me just what to write here on the next line here? So what do I put here? Negative 4. Negative 4. And it would be negative, or minus negative 3, so just put plus 3. Careful. Careful. We're doing y2 minus y1, right? Uh, 5. So just minus 5. OK. And then on the bottom? Yeah, so you have to be careful there because you're subtracting a negative. Everyone see that? You're taking negative 7 and you are subtracting negative 3. And when you subtract a negative, it becomes plus. So let's keep going here. We've got negative 9 on top. And on the bottom, really, this becomes a negative 7 plus 3, right? So that gives you negative 4. And a negative divided by a negative is positive. So this is 9 fourths. OK, questions? We're not going to do a decimal here. We're going to leave it as a fraction. Now, we're not done, right? 
We wanted to find the equation, the equation of the line. And all we have found so far is the slope. So now we bring in the next formula, which is this one right here. This says, oh, if I have a point and a slope, I can get the equation. So now, using the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Let's see. Who didn't get called on last time? Did anyone? Everyone? I called on everyone? Let's see here. I think I did. I still don't know all your names, so... Well, I can't read that at all. Let's see, is Allison here? Ah, oh, you weren't here last time, right? Okay, all right. Hi, are you okay? Okay. Are you following? It's okay? You sure? Okay, so I just want to rewrite this. Can you tell me what I'm going to put in here? Like start me off Y, and then just... So Y, take away, what's Y1 for us? Five, okay. And then equals, what do we find for M? Nine fourths, okay. And then parenthesis X minus negative, one, uh, negative three, right? Okay, there we go, right? Okay, so that is an equation of mine. Let's just clean it up a little bit, all right? We have Y minus five equals, here I'm gonna put nine fourths and then X plus three. And this right here is, we have answered the question, we have the equation of a line, okay? We do have it, this is it. You could do more, I'm not gonna require that you do more in this class. You could do more though, you could distribute the 9 fourths through the parentheses, and then you could bring the five to the other side. I'm gonna show you it, I'm not gonna ask you to do, to do it yourselves, but I'm gonna show it to you because I want you to see, I guess what's kind of cool about it if you, if you do simplify this. If I distribute through, so distribute here to here, I get 9 fourths x, and then I have plus, and then when I do 9 fourths times 3, the 3 hits the 9, becomes 27 over 4, like that. You understand what I did? 3 times 9, 27, then 4 times, there's really a 1 under here, right? And then on the other side, I have the 5, so I, or minus 5. I'm going to add 5 here, add 5 here. It'll go away, and I get y equals 9 fourths x. And then I have to put these two together. So if it did that over here on the side, I do 27 over 4 plus 5 over 1. And then this is where you have to get a common denominator and add those together. So you would have to multiply top and bottom by 4 here. I'm going to trust you, you would do that on the side, get this. This becomes 47 over 4. If you add those two together, you get 47 over 4. Okay? This is another answer. I mean, it just it looks different than this, but the thing about this one is this one is in slope intercept form. And the thing that's nice about slope intercept form is you can graph you can graph this line easily if you have this form. That's what you did, that's what we did last class. Questions? This is all I want. If you want to do that, fine. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna do one more of these, and then I'm gonna ask you to do one. Alright? So same thing, find equation of line through what do you think I'm going to do with these points to make this hard? What's, what do we always do to make things hard? Fractions, Fractions exactly. Negative one half, three, and let's go with four. Um, negative five eighths. Okay, so I put fractions in there. It just makes things, makes our computations suck, all right? That's all it does. But as far as the actual procedure, it's exactly the same. Questions at all at this point? All right, so let's see here. No Jose, right? 
How about Alexis? Sarah? Yes? Hi, Sarah. What's going on? You seem down. All right. Did you have class before this? No. No? Okay. Does this make sense to you, All everything we're doing? Okay. All right, so what do I do first? Can you see okay? Pass that thing? Okay, okay. I, I did that just to help us see it. We don't have to. Okay. Yep. So we're going to do m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, tell me what to write. Negative 5 over 8. Okay. And then minus y1, which is 3. 3. Okay, so you're using, Sarah's using what I did before, calling this y1, this y2, and that's going to be x2 and x1, right? Okay. And then over. Negative 1 half. So we've got a double negative there, right? So that's going to turn into a plus. Let's go ahead and take care of that right now. And then this is the part where you have to add fractions, right? So this is not going to be, you know, it's not our favorite thing to do, but it's also something that you, on the first test, had to do. So I'm going to just do that over here on the side. Uh, negative 5 over 8 um, minus 3 over 1. Do you all see how I, I subtly tried to do this without, do you all see how I've, I've pushed this negative on top? Right? And I talked about that when we were back on Zoom, that when you have a negative in front of a fraction, it can be on the bottom or the top or out front. I put it on the top here just so I don't lose track of it. All right? So it's up here. It's a negative 5. Now this is, um, again, up to you how you do this. I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by, oops, by 8. Right? That's what I should multiply by so we get the same. So negative 5 over 8 minus, this is going to be 24 over 8. And now we can combine those, right? Jareth, you want you okay with that? Yeah. So what's this become? Sorry. It's all right. So negative twenty nine. Negative over eight, right? Okay, and that's just this top, right? That's just the top. And now we have to do the same thing on the bottom. We have to take four and add a half, okay? So I'm gonna save us some time there. I'm not gonna show that step. This would be nine over two. So now that we have this, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. You all remember what to do with that? You can rewrite it as negative 29 over eight divided by 9 over 2, right? That's really what this means, right? Taking that fraction, dividing by that fraction. And that's the same, we do that keep dot flip thing, right? That's what we do here. So this becomes negative 29 over 8. Keep, change it to a dot, flip it. And then, let's see, Abigail? You there? Abigail? No? Keegan, how's it going? Good. What would you do here? You go across. Would you would you ever like think about doing the two and eight now, or is that not really the way you look at it? Okay, but you wouldn't, right? So we'll just do it. So if you go across, that's going to be what, like negative negative fifty eight over 72, and then you'd have to reduce that. Well, you wouldn't have to reduce it, but it would be a good thing to reduce it. Um, and we know 2 goes into both of those, right? So on top we would get negative 29, and on the bottom we get 36. That's our slope. Weird slope, right? Weird slope, but it is a slope. Okay, we're done? Cambry, are we done? 
Have we, have we finished the problem? Have we found the equation of the line? No, this is just the slope, right? That's all that is. So we're not done, right? Understand that? So we're going to now bring in the second equation, right? So I'll write it down, and then you're going to tell me what to plug in. Is that all right? Feel okay with that? Yeah. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Well, thanks for coming today. I'm sorry I have to close in class early today, but you all have a good one, okay? I'm just kidding. Okay. Y minus what? Three. Three. Okay, good. Three equals? Equal negative 29 over 36. 36 times 29 over 36. 36. 36. All right, I'll just do it now then. Yeah. There you go. Okay, there it is. There's the equation of that line. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> one way, one, one, I'll, I'll give you one example of how this is actually used, okay? I told y'all that I'm trying to lose those 12 pounds so y'all get five, five extra points on your final. Final exam grade, not final grade, okay? Just to be clear, it's not a five point on everything, it's just the final exam. I'm already at seven pounds, so I, there's no way it's you know there's no way it's not going to be 12. So it's going to I might have to move my goal. Um, let's see. So what I'm doing is you know every day I'm I'm weighing myself, right? Weighing myself, and then you know it fluctuates. It depends on how much water and stuff you have in your system. So you take these take these different measurements like that, right? And then what you could do is you could take two of these points, like let's say I take the first one and the, and the last one, that's two points, right? And then I could find the equation of the line, because I know how to do that, yes? And if I find the equation of the line through those two points, <laughs> here, I'll move the point, right? If I find the equation, that's approximately what's happening, right? It's approximately what's happening. And then if I look at the slope of this, the slope, that slope will tell me the rate at which I'm losing weight. So if that comes out, um, to be, let's just say that the slope here is like, I'll do it as a decimal. You know how our slope here is a fraction? We could just get a decimal on the calculator. If that came out to be like negative 0.3x, let's say plus seven or something like that. Let's say that that's the equation I get from my data. This right here would be telling me that I'm losing, because it's negative, right? It's negative, I'm losing uh, 0.3 pounds per day. If I'm taking measurements every day and find the slope of this line, that slope would represent how much I'm losing a day. Anyone want to guess what it is right now for me? Hmm? Negative one? Almost. It's negative 0.8, which you can't, I can't sustain that. That's in the beginning it's going to be like that. But it'll probably, it'll probably get closer about negative 0.2. That's about Historically, that's about the best I can do. Um, but you see, it's just two points line, right? Now, the com a computer can do that for you. You just tell it, go find me a line. It'll do, it, do all the calculations. OK. Think about you know, if, you, if you run a business, and instead of looking at you know, weighing things, you're looking at you know, time, and then this is like you sold, you know, this is the money, the money you made selling Girl Scout cookies or whatever, this is time, right? You can, you can kind of get a like plot and then fit a line to it and it'll tell you like the growth of your profit. So it's, it's useful to fit lines to points, right? In the real world. <clears throat> All right, any questions? Any questions? I think I'm gonna do the next topic and then I'm gonna give you all something to do, all right? So the next topic here is parallel and perpendicular lines. Now it's important when I say parallel and perpendicular lines 
all right, that we have plural, meaning two lines. The only way you can ever tell me that two lines are perpendicular or parallel is if you have two lines. You can't just give me one line and be like, oh, is that parallel? You have to have something to compare it to. Okay, so when we talk about lines, parallel and perpendicular, here's what we mean. Two lines are parallel if, what, we, do you remember we, me talking about this before and I, I said uh, parallel and I drew you those really nice pictures, remember that? It was at the end of class, a lot of y'all were like ready to go, but um, we had talked about what it means for two lines to be parallel, right? So who wants to remind me what we had agreed upon? Two lines are parallel if what? They never cross, they never touch, right? Is that good? If they, if they never cross. Okay, we'll just say cross each other. They never cross, touch, whatever, right? Then they're parallel. Great, I, I agree with you, but let's do this more mathematically, all right? Mathematically. So the way we would say this mathematically is this. That's one way, well, hold on. Yeah, that's one way. We could also say, or if they have the same, oops, same what? Slope. Slope. If they have the same slope, right? You have two lines parallel. They have to have the same slope. If, if this one has a different slope than this one, then it's eventually going to hit it, right? But if they have the same slope, then they will be parallel, right? So that's a better definition. So look at it this way. Let's say you're given two lines, right? Let's say you're given two lines. The first one I'm going to call it L1, all right? Line one. And here's line one. Y equals M1X plus B. So what I want you to do here is look at this line. Y'all remember this equation, right? Y equals mx plus b. That's the slope-intercept form of the line. That's the second form that I showed you today, right? And we said that the m dictates the slope, right? So I'm saying for line 1, here's the equation, and m1 is the slope, right? m1 is the slope for the first line. Then the second line, L2, is going to be y equals m2, oops, m2, I said 2, I wrote 1, m2x plus b. These two lines will only be parallel if what? These two lines, L1, this is the symbol we use for parallel, L1 is parallel to L2 if what? Tell me. If the slopes are the same. So in terms of 